The Pulse with Andy Blake, presented by Coca-Cola in association with BSP Life and supported by Fiji Link, Fiji Airways and Captain Cook Cruises Fiji. Bulevinaka and welcome to The Pulse. I trust you're having a great evening from whatever part of our beautiful country you're joining me from. Live on MyTV, across our MyTV Facebook page, including our viewers on our YouTube platform. Thank you for your great company. This week, I sail to Makungai Island in the Lomai Viti group of islands and take a promenade through an important part of Fijian history. Then we meet singer talkers Artika Kumar who adds sweetness into the Rewa Delta. And later, I plunge into the history of the leper colony of Makungai Islands. But first, my Talano session with the regal, legendary and iconic Bernadette Rounds Ganilau, our proud daughter of Fiji and pioneer of public broadcast that historically paved the way for women in politics in our country. My education uh, is at St. Joseph's right from the very beginning and in those days the St. Joseph convent was adjacent to the Catholic Church in Suva and that is where the Reserve Bank of Fiji is now. And uh, so I had my education there. Then I went to middle school, which was of St. Joseph's up in Waimanu. And I only spent one month at St. Joseph's Secondary. And then my, uh, our papers for Australia came through. My father migrated to um, Australia in the uh, uh, early, early 60s. And our papers didn't come through until uh, 1967 because my mother was considered black. And Australia at the time had the white Australia policy, especially in New South Wales with Premier Arthur Caldwell. So because we were on my mother's passport, we were considered black as well. So it took us about four or five years to get to Australia. And so I left after one month in St. Joseph's uh, Secondary and went to Australia. And I went to Monte San Angelo, a wonderful Catholic girls school in North Sydney. Yes, after I finished uh, my studies and I saved up enough money to travel, I decided to go to Israel and uh, I was going the long way. I was going through Asia, I was going to go through South Africa, I wanted to go to Ethiopia, etc. And those were the times of the wars. So uh, the civil wars were beginning there and that's when uh, you had total devastation insofar as uh, uh, governments were concerned. So I got stuck in Hong Kong. So I stayed in Hong Kong for about a year. I was only supposed to be there for a week. I stayed for a year just to see what things were happening in Burma and uh, in, uh, in, um, in Israel and also in Ethiopia because that was the route I was taking. And um, I ended up getting a, a, a job as a teacher, most people do, English teacher, and uh, met people. I ended up getting uh, applying for a job in the English language department of NHK, which is Nippon Hoso Kyokai, which is um, a, a Japanese. Uh, radio station at the time, radio and television station at the time. So when I knew I had this solid platform of communication uh, work, I came back to say my goodbyes. So I came back to Australia, packed my bags, said goodbye to my mum and dad, came to Fiji for a week before I flew off to, uh, to uh, Japan. And whilst I was here, uh, my brother who was working as a journalist at uh, FBC said, two of the, uh, the um, copywriter has, has left. Can you just come in and copyright for about a week? And I said, yes, all right. So I went to the English language copyright department and uh, that was Abe Magoon, brilliant writer and uh, a brilliant copywriter. And uh, he, uh, I was there. While I was there, I mean, you just see how God works, eh? Just the succession of things. Whilst I was there, two English um, um, two English announcers left. One was Vernie Moore, an amazing Tony Moore's uh, mother, the, the our um, sprinter. And another one was Jennifer Smith, I think was her name. 
and uh, they both left. They gave their notice in, so they panicked. And uh, Hugh Leonard, who was the ma uh, the manager at the time, said, "Could you come and fill in?" It's just because I just spoke English. I just, you know, and I spoke. So I filled in, and when they left, there was nobody else. So they had asked people to apply, and they had about 300 and so applicants. And he said, why don't you apply? I said, no, I'm on my way to Japan, and I kept on stalling that. And they said, just apply. When I applied and did my test, they said, can you be our, the new announcer? And of course, getting paid for something you like, we're just talking. And I just, yeah, why not? So that's how I got into it, accidentally. No training, no nothing no training so I ended up running the women's program I was the first local woman to do that I did the news which was called Fiji and the world at seven o'clock and I was the first local woman to do that they had um, Lazarus of Usoniwai Lala Kalara's father he was the he was the first local to smash the ceiling insofar as English language broadcasting was concerned he did all the teen programs he was really the Mr. Cool guy of that time so I was the first woman after that and that was the time of Yaminyasi Ngaunavo. Yaminyasi then took over from uh, Busoni Wailala and then Semi Kuroi and, and Gary, uh, Gary Acosta. And it was just such a wonderful time because Mary and Lilo, you all had to do your own thing. And, uh, you know, we had to do our own recording, our own interviewing, our own writing, our own production, but the technician put it all together, our own editing. So uh, it was really a baptism of fire. So that's how I got into it. And I loved it nothing. I was never interested in politics. I thought all politicians were crooked. I didn't think anything, uh, uh, you know, they, did, did they acquiesce to the, the, the will of the people, to the whim of the people that, uh, that, um, that voted them in? And whilst we did have wonderful women politicians at the time, Andy Losalini Ndovi, we had uh, Maureen Wright, we had uh, Irene Jane Narayan, powerful women, Lavinia Akoi, powerful women in Parliament. Um, I still had my reservations about uh, the political life. And then, just out of nowhere, I did always have women because I worked on the ground. I never, I, I worked with women who were struggling and everything, and they'd always say, man, Miss Rounds, you should enter, you know, that's through the ages. Then, Mrs. Nganilao, you should enter, and oh, never interested, you know. And then, just out of the blue, Mick Beddoes just asked me, he said, Brindet, what do you reckon? Why, why don't you run in the next elections in 2006? And I just said, you know what? I think I will, Mick. Three months, that was three months for my prep. And though I had to almost sit an exam with the United Party at the time, and that was the amazing Ver Vero Chan, Veronica Chan, who passed uh, last year. She was an absolute foundation together with Freddie Kane and Vincent Costello. These were the old war horses of politics, the background of politicians, these, these, these people. And so they stringently interviewed me. What were my expectations and who did I think I was wanting to enter, etc. It was really quite stringent. And then when they agreed and then we started our campaign. We funded all ourselves and everything. And my campaign was to walk. And so, because I couldn't afford money to have a television campaign or uh, any media campaign or anything, if there was a, a debate, I made sure I was in it. I made sure when I knew anything political and was public was on, I would go to it and be part of it and enroll myself in it. And I'd come with books and everything, because these were all things I could refer to back, back because I'm an NGO. And when you've gone through the NGO uh, discipline, you have a different attitude to life. I always think that it's, it's, it's best to have an NGO profile when you go into politics. Have your professional profile and however want, whatever you want to do with it. But an NGO profile, civil society, you've got to know what people want. You've got to know how people move, how act from down there to up there. And especially down there because the majority is down there. I loved being in politics. Um, you know, you have to have a thick skin to be in it. And you have to be sure when you go in, you're sure. When I first became the deputy leader of the opposition, oh my goodness, I mean, I went from being a person on the street to the deputy leader of the opposition and knew nothing. No, you don't learn to be a politician. You go in to be a politician. You know, you go in and then become a politician. And uh, dear Rote Mumu used to write little notes to me and say, Spendit, you've got to be strong here. You've got to write that because if anything was held at me, 
in my NGO world, I would stand up and say, what, what do you think? You blah, 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 that kind of thing. You can't do that. We're supposed to be civilized in there, you know. But um, I gradually learned and I learned from an amazing people. Uh, uh, firstly, as a um, democratically elected politician and a parliamentarian, knowing what the process of parliament was and what the process of cabinet was and what the process of uh, government and the uh, civil service was. And uh, you had wonderful people like um, uh, Mary Chapman leading us in, 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 in how to act. <laughs> wrap you on the knuckles and says yeah take it easy or something like that you know Mick Beres was a wonderful leader and so we had all these all these signposts around us and all these guardians what I call so we slowly grew and then just when I think I came to full capacity <laughs> we were totally trounced from there and we were removed but then I became a member of the um, the, uh, the uh, military government in, um, in February and that was through my own constituents. They found out that uh, Frank had asked me to join and I had refused for two weeks. And they found out and they all gathered here and said, you owe it to us. There is no Kailoma in this new lineup. There are Fijians and Indians and no Kailoma. So with a heavy heart and tears, I had to ring Frank Bainmarama here and say, hello, Frank. Yeah, the, uh, 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 yes, I'll say yes. He said, okay, good. I'll see you tomorrow at 10 Government House. That's when you'll be sworn in. No new dress, no new hairstyle, no new nothing. Sand, all my governors just wore up there to be signed in. My little daughter was with me at the time. Jordana was with me at the time and my husband. My husband stayed outside at the ADC's office and he said, you take Jordana in. He called her Kainona, that's her name. You take Kainona in and she stands with you. My young daughter was with me when I got sworn in. And um, I swear, that she will be standing in my position in another 10 to 15 years time, I know that. I loved every minute of broadcasting, being knee deep in the sugarcane fields and the rice paddies in Lombasa and, in, uh, and just, you know, letting the people just come. When you were broadcasting those days, because I mean, we were the only media. And so radio being the medium of just listening, people would they don't listen, they sit in front of the radio and watch the radio as if you can see the people on radio. When Graham Eden was, um, was doing a game in football or in a rugby union or anything, people sit around the radio to watch the radio as if they can see the game because Graham was such a communicator. So that was your goal to be a communicator. In our days it was Sammy Mudalia, Sammy Koroy, I tell you that guy can talk a crab to get rid of its shell and everything and then, so we all moved together with James Dutta so people came from far and wide from Savu Savu from the islands come and see us wherever we were in Lombasa or in any of the outer islands it was wonderful I, I love the aspect of that it was meeting the people and interviewing them they were just stars the people they would because they were so happy to be part of it we'd, uh, we'd have a dancing competition I mean what's the use of a dancing competition on radio but you can just hear the screaming and the yelling and the fun and all. It was just, you know, we turned it into a visual, into a visual medium. And so uh, the highlights was that and magnificent days, magnificent. Because my job at FBC allowed me to be able to go and interact with the girls during their practice runs and everything. So we were all friends. Everybody would just be so excited to be with each other. Uh, being the first woman, they were always European people that were European men that were uh, emceeing it like Herbie Marlowe and uh, some great people like that and uh, so it was very unusual that um, a woman did it and I, I loved it. Uh, it was it was a star-studded event. It was always held at the Phoenix. The Phoenix Theatre was the theatre in those days. So the whole road was blocked except for the Hibiscus Festival. People were crowded down that way, down this way towards Walu Bay. And, you know, just the, the walkway to go towards the entry of, of the Phoenix Theatre. And the girls would step out of their cars with their escorts. And in those days, I think, you know, they had the, the European boys and the Kailoma boys and everything. Then they went to the army after that, the army officers or young cadets were there. But they would be cheered and whistled. It was just, it was like a star-studded thing. So uh, it was all held live, of course, at uh, the um, 
at the uh, Phoenix Theatre. They were wonderful days, wonderful prizes, uh, wonderful girls, very clever girls and very uh, uh, wonderful, you know, we, we, we've had some wonderful girls in the last few years. That was so nice. Um, I think my background, my uh, Kailonga background makes me a proud Fijian because I do have Fijian blood and that's the Fijian blood from uh, Singa Singa Nilava and also from uh, Black Duck, Naloa and uh, also from Benga and uh, so we have blood that belongs and we have blood that belongs to this ocean. Uh, my father was a Kailoma and I remember <clears throat> when we won the elections there was only two of us in opposition when they became the opposition and everybody went into the uh, political party of the day with Garise and we were invited to join them, myself and Mick. And Mick said, Bernadette, we have to have a meeting. We've been invited to, uh, to join government. And I said, yeah, but we're opposition. We didn't win uh, in that party. He said, yes, but we've got the option. And I said, Mick, so we would have had to be with Labour as the opposition. And I said, Mick, my father went to war for Fiji. His gift when he came back from Fiji was a spade and a, and a fork for his garden and his little pension, whatever pension he was going to get later on. I want to walk into government house with my father's spade and fork on my shoulder. I want to walk through the door. I don't want to climb through the window because we were afterthoughts for for a political party. He said, no, 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 we'll be. I said, no, Mick, if we are opposition, we are opposition. So I was glad that I took my, that aspect of myself into, into parliament because I remembered who I was, where I came from and where I'm going to. And it was all for Fiji. So my pride of what makes me Fijian is exactly that, my blood, which is a mixture of this great liquid continent which is the Pacific including Fiji. Um, my daughter coming into my, our lives, my, my husband and I's lives, I was always too busy working when I was young, so busy working because I was working for all of us and I had a household here, I mean I had an extended family here, I was looking about after nine people or something like that and so my husband looked after her and my the nanny and my aunties and everything and um, uh, when he passed, and then I had to, of course, be there for him. And um, I think my my daughter is one of the uh, the gifts or blessings to me. And uh, I can sometimes think it's unreal. Uh, she has her moments, of course, but her her care and love for me during my sickness was unequaled. I've never done anything for my mother like that or my aunties because they were never that sick and I'm the first person in my family to be this sick. But that's because of the lifestyle I had when I was young, you know, uh, with the diabetes and stuff like that. But um, I'm very, very proud of that and, 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 and an unreal thing for me of that. And another unreal thing is my, my faith. I am so proud of my faith. When you're young, you just tend to, unless you are absolutely groomed in it. Uh, and, 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 and I always had faith and spirituality in this house but I was always having a good time as well. Now I find that I am so happy with knowing God. I am so, I've come through all of this. I mean, I've gone into hospital five times in the past two, two years, five times. Five times I could have lost my leg. Five times I walked out of there. I mean, I do walk with a stick, but that doesn't matter. It just means I have three legs. I've got four eyes, three legs and a sharp mouth. What more can you ask for? So I, I, just, I just come back. So I just think, oh, well, Baba, I don't think Daddy's ready for me yet. I think he's still having peace in paradise. Or maybe God wants me to do some more work here. So what I find is my faith has become more stronger now than it ever has been. I love it. I embrace it. And I, uh, I, um, uh, I work in the community with some amazing ladies, uh, you know, widows of the, the Catholic Church. Um, Selai uh, Narun and uh, Dr. Rufina Latu, uh, uh, Mrs. Moa and Mrs. Mali Mali, and uh, I, I'm just so so happy to uh, be in that genre. So now it's not the bright lights, it's not the parties, it's not the drinking, it's not the socializing. That that becomes 
um, uh, secondary. It's what you can do for other people, what you can do to help other people, to lift them up. You climb that wall, you go to the top of the wall, you bend down and you just keep on reaching down to bring people up and over the wall and it's such a wonderful thing. And so that's what I, I find unreal, that I can still love it, that I can still love uh, welfare work and helping people. So we have a lot to do with the nuns. We feed the old nuns and we uh, work with the communities and uh, it's, it's nice. It's, it's very satisfying and I say thank you Lord every day. Mm. Um, I think you, you forget. You don't, you don't look back. I don't look back and say I did this, I did that. I'm only saying this to you because you're asking me these questions. <laughs> but you never ever, it's gone. It's gone. Um, I, I don't think I did anything hateful to anyone. I don't think I did anything to upset anyone so that they lost their job, their home, their, they, ha they became sick. I, I have regrets, but those regrets are gone. I could have been a better person. That's the only regret that I feel, that I could have been a better person, a better mother when I was younger. But I was busy, you know, women who work full-time at several jobs are busy and when they come home they're tired you know but I, I should have just remembered just to have had a little bit more compassion etc but that's all gone so we all try to make up for it now but uh, I, I'm just glad that Bernadette Rounds Nanila walked this earth and that I had the family that I was and that if I touched anybody at all in a good way whether it was one person or two persons or three persons, then um, I would have done my little bit um, on this earth. And I just thank God that um, I lived in this beautiful country called Fiji and in this wonderful neighborhood called Flagstaff, Kaunikwila. This is where the flag flies from, son. This is the center, centerpiece of Suva. This is the crossroads of Suva. This is where you go down towards the university you go down towards the airport to fly out of here. You go up towards the interior of the island and then you can either stay here in Flagstaff. <laughs> um, I'm, uh, I, I love colors. I love things. I love cooking. I love cooking for people. And uh, 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 we cook for the father-in-law home, for the, uh, our senior citizens and our um, uh, uh, not so well people. We cook for the nuns and uh, we cook for the communities, I cook for families and I love that, I love that, that they love the food. I mean, I guess they can't say, man, this is horrible, take it back. But um, uh, we love that, my daughter loves doing things like that too. From the 90s, um, I think my husband and I coming back from Australia and building our own home for the first time, we went away in the, uh, in the late 70s, we stayed there until the late 80s and um, he was a footballer in Australia and uh, we were helped by the most amazing people over there, the Divani Vervas, the Batantas Sangas, um, uh, Swepsons, the Hicks and you know the Wongs, the Wong family. We were just so so proud to be part of this wonderful the Fiji diaspora in, uh, in Brisbane and when we came back and I took up this old house again because we had gone and we came to live in this house that I was brought up in, that my mother and father had made their home. And uh, my husband and I took up this home and that, 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 would be, that would be the most loving, nostalgic part of it, that my husband and I made our first home here. He lived here and he died here. So that was uh, a wonderful thing and my daughter was brought into this house and this is her home and her future. Uh, I think those would always remain with me because family is very important to me. My family is very important to me. I think from my mother, always I've been advised throughout my life when I was young, I was a big fat girl at 12. I looked like a woman of 52, but I was big and you know, I just, and gave me and I was 12 years old and that sort of thing. I always had parents and family who always told me I was beautiful, I was clever. I was stupid. I wasn't clever. I didn't do well at school, you know, but they always were very encouraging and very, very gracious like that, but still whipped into line, of course. But I think when my, I, I became a member of Garcia's uh, government and um, I was the assistant minister uh, for women and I was uh, in charge of social welfare and I rang my mother 
and uh, my mother and I said to her, "Mummy, I'm I'm a minister." With George Spade, this is my mother, and I said, "No, no, with Raisini and Garise." Listen, this is all in Tongan. Listen, your father was in the PWD for 30 years. Don't spoil his name. You hear? Don't spoil his name. I said, yes, mom. And, uh, and what else? This is all in Tongan. And I said, oh, and I've got a car. I've got a car. She said, look here. You just walk everywhere. You, you're going to lose that car tomorrow. You're going to lose your driver. And you've got somebody to look after you? And I said, yeah, I got a security. You're going to lose the security too. You don't ever change. You walk to go and get your lunch. You walk to go and do this. You don't try and be fancy because you weren't brought up fancy. Okay, maro apito fatu. I mean, what kind of, that was the most painful advice. But I mean, that was spice. You just be yourself. Don't try and be anything else other than uh, what you are, you know? Imagine when she said, your father was in the PWD for 30 years. Don't spoil his name. Because <laughs> he had an impeccable record, you know. And so that's what, what the Kailomas were proud of in those days. And that was what you graduated from when you were a boy. Um, I hope that I was a good person. I hope that uh, I w was a good person. I hope that um, somehow, somewhere, people will have it in their heart that said, yeah, Bernadette was good. Uh, I hope that I, I wasn't too nasty because my mouth is very smart to be nasty. I have a very strong mouth. I have tried to put that to bed for the last 10 years or so, but um, I had a very strong mouth. And uh, I apologize to those I may have said things to that, uh, that was um, out of, uh, out of uh, the blue, out of context and out of the way. But, um, I hope that somehow, somewhere, that I was good to somebody, yeah, and that uh, I will remember somehow by, uh, by that, and uh, I wasn't cruel or unkind or, or um, physically, uh, uh, physically wrong to anyone, you know what I mean? Yeah, so hopefully that. Oh yeah, and it's just doing that, it's or staying and doing jewellery, or cooking or baking or trying to just tidy up the clutter i'm a hoarder people are so kind excuse me they leave me things when they travel overseas or they'll say oh maybe somebody in your community might want this so the more i receive and the more i take give away the more it, i i receive do you know what i'm saying so i'll give cartons of clothes beautiful handbags copies of chanel and everything like that they all go out and I'll, somebody will say, Bendit, I've got a few things here. Do you think you'll, you'll be interested in that? That comes back. Then that goes again. Sheets, towels, everything. No sooner has it left, I've got somebody else saying. Um, thing. Because you've got to keep that circle going. Because the circle is a circle of life in every way. In the community, in your way of life, in your food, in your everything. So that's what we just keep doing. And uh, so uh, my downtime is just doing that. I start off with maths in the morning. So I leave home at about quarter to six. We say the rosary, and then we have mass at 6.30. So that's one community that I deal with. I deal with the widows. I'm also part of the IWA with uh, Judy Compe, an amazing uh, president of our organization. We do a lot of work in that area. I'm also part of the Fiji China Friendship Association. We are distributing medicine at the moment, down at the markets and everything. Amazing medicine from China, which is um, anti-COVID. Uh, if you've already got it, of course, but you take it just to ensure that you are uh, strengthened by these herbs. And so I'm with the Fiji China Friendship Association and, uh, of course, my widows, the Grace Ministry of um, the Catholic Church. So I've just kept going. There's something every day. And um, I'm very happy that that's, uh, that's the case because um, I really want to, when I close my eyes and close my eyes forever, it's either standing up or I'm talking or something and then ding, that's it. Not to be lying sick and infirmed and yeah, my leg, I still walk like this, but I still walk. My mouth does the, my mouth is sharper than ever. So yeah, that's good. I'm Bernadette Rounds Nganilao on The Pulse with Andy Blake. 
The ever so regal and delightful Bernadette Rounds Nganilau, my Talano session with truly an icon and pioneer of Fijian public broadcasting and women in politics. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to sharing your inspirational journey, Mrs. Nganilau, and I wish you well. Time for a short break, I set sail to Makongai Island next with Captain Cook Cruises Fiji. Stick around for my Eat, Stay, Love. See you soon. The Pulse with Andy Blake, presented by Coca-Cola in association with BSP Life and supported by Fiji Link, Fiji Airways and Captain Cook Cruises Fiji. Makongai Island in Fiji's Lomaiviti Archipelago, famous for being the home of lepers or those suffering from the disease of leprosy in the year 1911. Today, this idyllic island is rich in history that dates back to the 1800s and is one of the attractions on Captain Cook Cruises Fiji's Lao Discovery and Remote Cruise to the North. This here is one of the many attractions on the island. The steps of what used to be the Leprosy Hospital that was officially opened on November 29th in the year 1911 and housed the first 20 patients. Later, patients began arriving here from countries across the South Pacific and in total, 4,000 patients were admitted into the hospital. Explore the leper colony and clam research station in one of the historic jewels of the Lomaiviti province. Located off the southern parts of Vitilevu and a boat ride away from the old capital in the island of Ovalau, Makungai Island is a postcard of verdant green hills sloped down to a narrow palm-covered flatland. You will visit the sites and structure remains of the cinema, jail and cemetery. This is your postcard back in time. One of the many other attractions on the island is the Clam Research Stations that is equipped to conduct research on marine commodities, spawning and culturing of giant clam species including cage farming of coral trout and cod. The baby giant clam stocks produced at Makonga Island have been used to restock the reefs around Fiji. It's a humid day on Makongai Island and we are standing at the site of what used to be a movie theatre some 100 years ago. Now you cannot get any better than this, Anna. What has been the experience like so far on the island? Where do I start? It's such a blessing to be here. Uh, where we're standing is the cinema. Opposite us is where the prison used to be uh, and even in front of us was the gravesite back then. It's just such a, a great privilege to even have take a glimpse of the past and of also um, a, a history for Fiji. Some of the old structures of the Leprosarium remain on Makunga Island today. You can still sight others that appear as mere shells hidden under vines and other foliage which adds to the mysterious attractions of the island. 
The Leprosarium began operation with two nuns and during its 58 years of existence, approximately 2,500 patients were effectively treated and sent back home to their friends and families. Around 500 were repatriated back to their homeland and the remaining 1,241 died due to the direct effects and complications of leprosy. All leprosy patients on the island was cared for by nuns. The Pulse with Andy Blake, presented by Coca-Cola in association with BSP Life and supported by Fiji Link, Fiji Airways and Captain Cook Cruises Fiji. Bula, welcome back to The Pulse. I trust you're enjoying the show this evening. Before the break, my Eat Stay Love profile on Makungai Island, a memorable trip that you can experience when you sail with Captain Cook Cruises, Fiji's Loud Discovery and a Remote North Cruise. Great stuff indeed. Now let's head into the Rewa Delta for some sweetness and meet Artika Kumar in our homegrown segment this week. Bakers make the world smell better and sharing her talent of pastry making and cake creations is Singatoka native Artika Kumar. Based in the heart of the Rewa Delta and the Tailevu capital, now sorry just inherited the sweetness from the salad bowl valley. Hola, I'm Artika, Artika Kashni Kumar. Originally I'm from uh, Singatoka. Uh, I have uh, I've got a background, hospitality background. I've been working in the resorts for past 15 years. And uh, all around, I've been working in a few five-star resorts in Fiji before I moved to Cook Islands. That there I spent around six years. Then I came back, joined Womo Island Resort, where I met my husband. And once we decided to get married, that's when I moved uh, to Wananabu Beach Resort. And uh, I moved to Nosori then. Uh, when I started off with the uh, Wanadabu Beach Resort and uh, after one year the pandemic started and that's when uh, the resort uh, closure was done and uh, we were all terminated. I started off uh, we, I started off staying at home with uh, just around and uh, that's when uh, we started operating our small business that was in September last year. We started off with few cakes and uh, it's almost more than a year now we are running and it is good picking up very well. Okay. I always had a head in my mind that I want to have my small uh, business as a, of as a restaurant because I love cooking and I love baking as well. And uh, then uh, either as a restaurant business or a coffee shop. But uh, due to the pandemic, that's when we start when I started staying home. Then that was a good uh, good move for us to start off a business where the cake business was the best one to start off with, the coffee beer. And then we are also planning to move on with the coffees and uh, pizzas and other takeaways as well. We are operating under Sam's Cakes and Pastry, located in uh, Kuku, uh, Kuku Bao Road in Nosori, just four, around 4 kilometers away from Nosori town. We have got delivery options available as well on uh, condition supply on the delivery options and the types of cakes that we do uh, we start off with uh, I'll start off with the cakes for all occasions any occasions, special occasions, weddings uh, 
or you want to surprise someone, we have the, put the cakes, cupcakes available. And that variety of cakes that we do is uh, cheesecake, tiramisu, black forest, white forest, and uh, all the standard cakes. And you know, all my standard cakes, it's uh, always three layers. Yeah, it's all three layers. And uh, we also accommodate all the dietary requirements, like uh, eggless cakes if you're a vegan, less, uh, less sweet. Uh, and there are more variety options available as well that we can always provide on our environment. The biggest challenge that I faced when starting off the business was the temperature. As uh, we are a small business, we operate from home. And the temperature was a very big concern as uh, it always... Uh, I needed a very cool environment. Normally, like, uh, coffees and cake, the cakes and uh, pastries is done under the aircon. Like, uh, most popular around amongst in uh, PT is, like, people go for the black forest cake and which requires uh, whipping cream and a very cool temperature and uh, the whipping cream cannot be you cannot work on the whipping cream at the room temperature so that was a very big challenge for me to walk back and forth to the chiller back on the walking bench back on the chiller and then also sourcing out the ingredients it was very difficult as uh, in nosori there's not a lot of uh, suppliers so we had to walk all the way with the our suppliers in Nandi. Uh, best thing about what I do, like baking is my passion and I love baking. Uh, the best thing is uh, all my cakes, it is freshly baked and if uh, the order was in yesterday, I'll get it freshly done today for the customer where the customer satisfaction is 100%. And uh, we always make sure that all my customers are satisfied with the product that we give out. and. Uh, and the good thing is that uh, I'm very happy when the customer is satisfied with the product that we give out. And uh, when I receive the calls for more orders with the customer satisfaction. And uh, most of the time we have got the returning customers that uh, are more satisfied and want to order from us again and again. And uh, it, uh, it, may, it motivates me more. More and more to keep on baking despite uh, if we get tired of baking or we need more rest. But... Uh, Getting a good feedback from the customers is uh, really, really helpful and motivates us more and more. COVID-19 has impacted our business like uh, with the supply items mostly. And uh, since the border closure, and, uh, locally and internationally as well. When the border closure was uh, with New Zealand, we were affected with the dairy products that, that we used to use, the anchor products, and it was not in like the whipping cream, anchor butter and all. So we had to use the alternatives that uh, we have here. And also during the border closure, we were not able to get all our supplies from Nandi on time. And that was uh, one of the biggest challenges that I had to face with the customers that we had to alter their orders make changes in their order or we ended up with a few cancellations as well due to supply of the items that was not available on time due to the closure. Uh, we started off with uh, very few customers and our customers were really satisfied. They they became our regular customers and they, we get the orders from them often. That was a very big support and they also helped us get more customers in. Like they have been uh, promoting us uh, through the taste of the cake. They have been uh, giving out our contacts as well to their friends, their co-workers as well. As uh, during the pandemic, it was a restricted movement and all. So we started off then, that's when we started off doing deliveries as well. And that was also a very big support that the customers were happy with the home deliveries. Work hard, love what you are doing, have, uh, patience. have patience, stay calm and uh, physically try and get more support uh, if you need physically. Do not overwork or get tired, that, that can uh, affect the production later on if you get sick or something. And, uh, customer satisfaction and uh, we have also learned that customers are always right. Uh, 
We cannot satisfy all the customers, but uh, yes, uh, there there are a few things that will uh, that will try and bring it down. But uh, we have to be more positive and uh, give it a. And uh, as I mentioned before, we cannot satisfy all the customers. Uh, we have got to, like all the customers, they have got different age bulbs, and uh, it's sometimes uh, they taste something with. Our product it will be different from what they have previously tasted. So they are we might get complaints and all. So what we have uh, to do is we have to be very patient, explain it to them very nicely, and uh, handle the situation, the complaint, and try and work on it. This week in our Culture Explained, we travel back in history to the island of Makongai in the Lomaiviti province and profile what was Fiji's leper colony. Makongai is part of the Lomaiviti group which includes Koro, Wakaya, Nairai, Mbatiki, Ovalau, Namena and Ngao Islands. Best known for the fact that it once was a leper colony, you can still cite the ruins of the old leper stations which stands as a reminder of those desperate days. Established in the year 1911, the purpose was to service the Pacific Islands, which was managed by a French order of nuns, the missionary sisters of the Society of Mary. By 1918, there were over 300 patients. Numbers were augmented in 1925 by the transfer of the residents from a leprosy settlement on Quail Island in New Zealand. There was strict segregation between living quarters of staff and patients, which were further grouped by nationality and gender. On the island, the patients were responsible for constructing their own buildings and farming, while the nuns provided nursing and facilities, including schooling, sports, postal and banking services, film screenings and a photographic darkroom. And that wraps The Pulse this week. I trust you enjoyed our show. My Talanoa with Bernadette Rounds Nganilao. My Eat Stay Love with Captain Cook Cruises Fiji. Homegrown with Artika Kumar and her SME, Sam's Cake and Pastry, including My Culture Explained on the Leper Colony of Makungai Island. I look forward to your company again next week right here on my TV. For comments and questions, send us a message via our Facebook page, The Pulse with Andy Blake. Remember to like our page and give this video a big thumbs up. You can also watch this episode again on demand via our MyTV YouTube channel and our Eat Stay Love segments on board Fiji Airways in flight soon. Enjoy the rest of your evening and stay safe. Misamo Demanda. The Pulse with Andy Blake, presented by Coca-Cola in association with BSP Life and supported by Fiji Link, Fiji Airways and Captain Cook Cruises Fiji.